Officials say the wildfire that killed at least 102 people on Maui last year erupted from an earlier brush fire that firefighters believed they had extinguished. The Maui Fire Department and the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives presented their findings on the cause Wednesday. The historic Maui town of Lahaina was destroyed in the disastrous wildfire. It has been unclear whether the blaze was a rekindling of the morning fire and whether firefighters should have left the scene after they spent hours dousing it. The officials stressed that Maui firefighters had done all they could to put out the morning fire before leaving to address other calls for service on a day when other fires were burning around the island. They deployed countless resources, spent an extensive amount of time on the scene, and observed the scene after they believed it was extinguished, Jonathan Blaze, the ATF special agent in charge of the Seattle Field Division, which includes Hawaii, told a news conference. To Lahaina and to our Maui community that our firefighters went above and beyond their due diligence to be as confident as they could be that the fire was completely extinguished before they left the scene. They remained on scene for over five and a half hours after the fire was completely contained, and for several hours after any visible signs of fire were detected. No flames, no smoke, no perceptibly glowing pieces of fuel had been observed for hours before they left. This is more than twice our average post-containment on scene time for similarly sized fires over the last several years. We are confident in the efforts of our firefighters that day, in the conditions that they faced, even in the conditions that they faced that they went above what they should have gone above and beyond in normal days to protect communities as best as they can. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Wednesday that Russia urges all sides of the conflict in the Middle East to act with restraint. During a weekly briefing with members of the press, Peskov stressed that the situation is progressing in the most alarming scenario, adding that Russia condemns any actions that result in the deaths of civilians. The Middle East moved closer to a long-feared regional war the day after Iran fired a barrage of missiles at Israel. Earlier this week, Israel said it began limited ground incursions into Lebanon targeting the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed late Tuesday to retaliate against Iran, while a top Iranian military commander warned that his country will hit Israel's entire infrastructure if it takes any action against its territory. The United Nations Security Council called an emergency meeting for Wednesday to address the spiraling conflict. Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since October 8 the day after Hamas cross-border attack on October 7, 2023, which killed 1,200 Israelis and took 250 others hostage. Israel declared war on the militant group in the Gaza Strip in response. More than 41,000 Palestinians have been killed in the territory, and just over half the dead have been women and children, according to local health officials. This situation is Мы призываем все стороны к сдержанности на фоне того, что происходит. И, конечно же, мы осуждаем любые действия, которые ведут к гибели гражданского населения. Ex-advisor of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Sahi Kuzan, has revealed details of several operations of the main intelligence directorate involving the Russian military. They include the recruitment of a cadre military officer, Daniel Alferov, who helped 11 military men of the Russian Federation to surrender and also to implement the blowing up of the Russian army officers' headquarters. This is written by analysts of The Telegraph. Also, the main intelligence directorate organized a sabotage on the Russian missile ship Serpukov in the Kaliningrad region. The operation was carried out by a Russian sailor who later crossed the border and switched to the side of Ukraine. The ship, a carrier of Kinzhal and Onyx cruise missiles, was at the Russian naval base in Baltisk, Kaliningrad region, and according to the DRU, could have been redeployed to reinforce the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The details of the operation were kept secret for several months, and only in July, during a press conference, were the details revealed. The explosion on the ship was carried out by a former Russian soldier of the Russian Baltic Fleet, pseudonym Goga, 
who had access to state secrets, the Telegraph said. Besides, after the missile attack on a children's hospital in Kyiv, one of the Russian pilots addressed a Ukrainian chatbot, passing secret information about his unit. The pilots were shocked by the attack on civilians, which prompted him to cooperate with Ukrainian intelligence. He handed over important personal documents and other valuable data. Against this backdrop, the analysts at The Telegraph point out that the Putin-led Russian government is continuing its course of authoritarianism resembling USSR 2.0. The latest crackdown on opposition leaders and independent journalists only exacerbates the country's crisis. But despite these challenges, new opportunities for opposition forces are beginning to emerge. According to experts, support from international partners is growing and the exchange of information between the militaries is giving new chances for revitalizing the opposition. For example, successful sabotage and actions damaging the Russian army may become a catalyst for changes in society. It is expected that with increased international support, Russian activists and the military, dissatisfied with the Kremlin's aggressive policies, may unite. This opens up the possibility for new forms of resistance within Russia as well as boosting the morale of opposition forces.